going on everybody it's your girl ask ashley here with another great episode of monday night juice i'm going to give you guys some time to come on in and get settled with us make sure you grab your favorite bottle of wine and we'll get started here in a second Monday Night Juice, come hang with us for a second. We are talking about colorism, light skin versus dark skin, and why this is even still an issue. So I want you guys to come in, give us your input, share the video, like the video. We gonna get started. We're going to get started right now. So, again, welcome to another great episode of Monday Night Juice. I'm your host, Ask Ashley. And tonight, we are talking about light skin versus dark skin, colorism, why it's still an issue. But before we get started, I got to make sure that I shout out our sponsors for tonight, which is Markel Benai. You guys can go ahead and get www. Um, your favorite wines from www.markelbenaiwines.com. And then I made a small little typhoon mistake last week the bougie the bougie yard sales actually on the 30th it was not saturday it was on the it's on the 30th so if you had an opportunity to miss it you have an opportunity to still go um the event is here at kickbacks it's well not at the loft but it's downstairs at kickbacks 8087 vine street from 3 to 7 p.m so again it is on the 30th and that is brought to you by the snack shop and kickback so make sure that you guys are coming out there are plenty of vendors that are going to be there you guys can shop can trade some things, have some drinks, get you some chicken, you know, and enjoy the festivities. Um, let me see. Lakeisha says, I'm going to cork me one also. Awesome. Thank you so much, Lakeisha, for being here with us. Summer, I see you. Terrence, I see you. I see we got a couple other people that are also tuned in. I want to make sure I give you guys some time to get here um, and just be a part of the conversation and engage. Again, make sure that you guys, um, India Riley, baby, I see you. Make sure that you guys are sharing the video and liking the video. Also, a big shout out to More Than a Pussy. She gave me this to wear today. One of my very favorite colors. So a big shout out to Danny J at More Than a Pussy. Um, tonight's guest, as you guys may know, um, my best friend came into town. And so anytime he's in town, I want to make sure that I get my due diligence time in with him um and he's always in town visiting his babies so i always get kind of pushed aside which is perfectly fine um because we got to put the babies first so i just make him come on the show so that i can get my time in without <laughs> anybody else interrupting me um and then we also have the beautiful jazz lawrence who is the creative director of her distraction adam is also a celebrity like model ph uh, photographer creator um uh hobby lobby viralist um, whatever else you want to call him, I just like to give him the title, My Best Friend. <laughs> and then we've got, um, I like to call him Cincinnati's Font Worth Bentley. We've got Christian Bradley, but he's a super educated brother who I just knew would bring a lot of value to this conversation. So I want to thank you guys so much for all coming on um, and taking the time to speak with us tonight. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Tammy, what's going on, babe? I do see you. You giving me this look. I don't know. You giving me a look like. <laughs> okay, wonderful. I'm glad we're all on the same page. Wonderful, wonderful. So again, tonight's conversation is about colorism, light skin versus dark skin, and why this is even an issue. Um, it bothers me that it's still an issue, but I am guilty of colorism. I'm guilty of... Um, actually, I make a lot of light skin jokes about Adam, which <laughs> he has been able to accept the 15 or so something years that we have known each other but um into looking upon this 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 subject a little bit more um i realized how ridiculous i am at times i have a really good friend who will tell you a lot of the times when i see my light-skinned friends or associates act a certain way i say that's that light-skinned shit they be on <laughs> And, you know, listening and hearing myself say it out loud, knowing that I'm having this conversation, I can say, Ashley, you were wrong. So um, I really want to get into it. And first, my, my first question for you all is, what are some of the differences between men and women um, that deal with colorism? Like, I think for women, we deal with it a certain way, different than how you all deal with it. And so I want to get into that. And Adam, I'm going to start with you first. Um, 
what would you say an example of how women deal with it? Okay, so because there's so many different aspects. Let me tell you. So he likes to come on my show and act like his name is Ask Ashley <laughs> and ask me a whole bunch of questions. Okay, so he likes to do that. No, because there's 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 so many different aspects in, in in which all of us deal with it from you know me you know light skinned people men saying we got hoes. I don't know. If, women if y'all have that same experience where a guy be like oh you got hoes or you talk to so many people just because you're light skinned and attractive you know what I mean like oh, okay. I, so see what you're saying. I see what you're saying um, well, light skinned is as far as how you you know oh you light skinned so you probably take a long time in the mirror or, you know what I mean it's just so many different aspects I mean of, do you though no I don't I don't at all <laughs> okay I don't at all but. I just want to know okay <laughs> okay um so I think for from a woman's standpoint I know that um I, I have, you know, my other best friend, Morgan, you know what I'm saying? She's light-skinned. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have seen her deal with people in a manner where they're like, she thinks she's cute because she's light-skinned. Or she's very arrogant because she's light-skinned. Mm-hmm. Or she's conceited because she's light-skinned. Um, uh, and that's never the case with Morgan. Like, you know Morgan. She's right, very right, right, goofy. Right, right. She's very down-to-earth. Very humble kind of person. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have seen people make this assumption that's almost equivalent to yours. Right. You got a whole bunch of hoes because you light skin. Well, right. she must think she cute because she light skin. Right, right. So um, we, we deal with that as well. Like um, I know the few times where I've heard people say they dislike me mm-hmm. or whatever, and like what's so crazy is I don't know if other light skinned people experience this too, but every single time, every it's been every time that mm-hmm. a, a, a dark skinned person or a brown skinned person has said they didn't like me, and you say why, it's always been the same answer. Oh, they think that he think he the shit. They think he the shit. It's like, where did you get this? Where did you get this from? Like, right. I, I don't walk around thinking I'm the shit. I don't dress like I think I'm the shit. Like, where did you get this from? And you know, that's the 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 biggest thing that I've I've experienced when it comes to that light skin versus dark skin thing, as far as them versus us or someone disliking me. You know, okay. other than that, it's just, you know, girls thinking I got hoes. So that's from a light skin perspective. Right. Um, Christian, I'm going to jump to you first and ask you from a dark skin perspective because I do know that I'm also guilty of calling dark skin men chocolate drops. And not all dark skin men, men may like that. So, you know, from a dark skin perspective, um, what kind of uh, examples of colorisms have you had to deal with? Masculinity, more so. Mm-hmm. So dark skin, you may be looked at more as down. Dark skin, you are down you are. Light skin, soft. Um, I gave an example earlier, Wesley Snipes and Shamar Moore. Mm. In the 90s, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, you know, Wesley Snipes, dark skinned brother, kicking everybody's ass on TV. Mm-hmm. Shamar Moore, pretty guy, <laughs> in the soap operas, getting all the women. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. sisters may feel more uh, protected with right. a dark skinned brother. You know, they may feel like they'll, you know, they'll go to certain spots with that brother because he knows she knows she, she, she's good. Mm-hmm. Versus with, you know, light skinned brother, they'll might go to the opera with him. They may go to you know, dinner in a certain place at Ruby's with him because he looks a certain. That's that's just that's not been my experience. It's but these are but examples these are, these are, these that you've been given. That, that you kind of, that you kind of so through. as a woman, I have been told several times that <laughs> 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 I can't believe I'm about to say this out loud. Um, I have been told several times that <laughs> that my relationships are not working because I choose light skinned men. If I had me a dark skinned man, he would not act the way that he acts. And I've been taught this several times. Um, you ever heard that? You ever I mean, heard that? Yeah, I mean, I've heard, like, obviously someone has come, like, if you date a light-skinned guy, you'll have, like, more problems. Like, you'll look at a light-skinned guy and be like, oh, he a problem. Yeah. Like, wait a minute. Like, I, 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 yeah. I really So the, today's show is going to be attack the light-skinned people. No, it's not. I'm so offended by that statement, though, <laughs> because I really feel like I'm a good-looking brother. I really feel like Absolutely. I'm a well I'm in the mirror a lot, so I like to look the way I look. I'm in HR, so I have to look a certain way in my job. And I don't care if you're light skin, green, blue, or purple. Mm-hmm. But it took me a long time to get to this level as well, though. Mm-hmm. I wanted mm-hmm. to be light skin in the 90s. My best friend is light skin, green, uh, light skin, but with green eyes. Hoop star with throw, my best friend. Mm-hmm. I was with him, I was, bat- I was Robin Tate's Batman. He got all the girls. I did. You know, we had golden, we had golden skates. Everybody on Ivy. Body on me. <laughs> and, and, they were sleeping and, on and you so, back then. But I mean, but I look like, but I was skinny and tall with glasses at a box, you know. So I was, I mean, she know me for, for years, you know. So she knows, <laughs> she know what it was. So and you grow into that. So now that I'm older, I'm 39. It's a little different. I don't. I don't He's not. I don't tell him that, you know, I like this guy. He's cool. So I don't care if he's light skin or dark skin. Right. What's his character like? Right. But we, but we do judge each other based off of the perception of childhood traumas mm-hmm. 
or stickers that we've had, generalizations that we've had, mm -hmm. that have gone back three, four hundred years. Mm -hmm. And it's silly, especially in all the technology we have. It's just really silly. To, to really, still to be still able to be fixated this, on it like, the way that we are. Because these comments that were said to me are recent. Wow. You know what I mean? They're recent comments. They're like, you know, I'm like, I've, I've already uh, put it out there that, you know, I'm doing this single thing. You know what I mean? Because I'm focusing on me. It has nothing to do with the guys that I've dated. It's about me and what I need to kind of, you know, the, yeah. the, the space that I need to get to before I'm even ready to share my life with somebody else yeah. again. So you be picking. Um, yeah, go ahead. The light skin was that's a, clearly. Nah. No, but the still. Type so. was, <laughs> the type of light skin was you picked. Um. So I'm going to read a couple of these comments. Um, let me see. What's up, DJ Savage? Victoria, hey, baby, I see you. Christopher, I see you. Amber, I see you. Um, Vine Wright said they love saying that light skins are stuck up, which I have heard. Actually, I I've heard, that. and this is no shade to this group because my mother is one and so is my little sister. But I used to think, my ignorance in high school, that AKAs were the stuck up most individuals stuck up in sedity individuals I would ever meet in my life. It was because though I encountered about five during that time and they all acted like that. Right. Um, now that my mother is an AKA and my little sister is an AKA and I've met so many other women who are a part of that um, organization, I, I love them. I, yeah. they're totally different. My eyes have been open. totally different. Now don't get me wrong, some people are stuck up, some people are sedity, but that's in any group. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And again, it's about the character of the person. It has nothing to do with their skin tone. And that's the crazy part because I think that you know, majority of the people who put those stereotypes, for example, you know, I've heard all my life that, you know, light-skinned men think they look better than the girl that they're with. Light-skinned men take longer to get ready. Like, I've heard that all my life, and like I said, majority, like, you know, people's perception is based off their reality, but I think some people just say that, just to say it because it's been taught, or their friend said it, or somebody else said it, when actually, I was like, I know a lot of light-skinned people, a lot of light-skinned guys at that. And when I say, like, I've never experienced a light-skinned guy who was into himself, who thought he was looking better than this girl, who, you know, D, you know, that's my best friend, yeah. and, and we all light-skinned, and D, I was just seeing him yesterday, he looked just scruffy, like, still with a do-rag on underneath his hat, like, don't care about his look, and, mm -hmm. you know, I've been that way, too, I, you know, I think that's my white side. You know, I always say that's my white side that I don't know how to dress and I just be throwing on anything. Shirts, I mean, it works for you. <laughs> so. But I've never, ever encountered a light-skinned guy in my life who was so into itself like that. So when people have those rumors or say that type of stuff, I'm like, where do y'all get this shit from? Like, I, 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 and I have dated light-skinned guys and I don't think any of the light-skinned guys ever thought that they looked better than me. I would never even allow them to think so. so um, <laughs> I'm not sure where that guy? came from. Yes, I mean, to have me, you I ever? Just, I'm going to be honest. I feel like just as much as it affects people from a brown skin, dark skin perspective, it has to somewhat affect the light skin community as well. Where it's like, I maybe grew up and I did have other privileges that dark skin people didn't have. So that does, you grow up in that. Just like he said, I had to grow into this. Yeah, absolutely. You do have people that are a different complexion that grow into this sense of privilege. And that, it happens. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I can't expect it not to. So it does happen. I'm not going to say it's non-existent. Everyone's experience and reality is completely different. different right. But mm -hmm. just know that, like, if it affects one side, it has to affect mentally the affect other the other Absolutely. somehow. Uh, Cassandra says, light-skinned men are the devil, but we can't oh. stay away from them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> tell them how you feel. I'm not going to let them attack you too much, my friend. Uh, Dave I'm Malone the said, that's the example of kid and play. Um, Chris says, wow, I honestly didn't know it was an issue until my friend told me um, that she was raised to feel that light skin is beautiful and dark skin isn't, and that could not be further from the truth. Um, <laughs> why did I know Tierra Montgomery was going to come on this show? Because you was out oh, here, she was going to go in on you. Tierra says, light skinned people get as much hate as dark skinned people, which is, mm -hmm. which is true. Um, she says, black is black, can't we all just get along? Chrissy says, light-skinned men don't care how they look because they know that they look good no matter what. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and Cassandra says, no shade. I love you, though, Adam. <laughs> so um, I want to talk about that for a second. And, Adam, I'm going to ask you this question because, obviously, none of us can answer it. Is there light-skinned privilege? Uh, um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. What? Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't think... I just don't think there's... I think there's a privilege of being attractive. Absolutely. Do I think light skin is 
better. No, I think like if we That's equally true. went to Chipotle and he went to the line first, the girl would throw a little bit of extra chicken on his bowl, <laughs> just like yeah, she'd throw a little extra chicken on my I don't bowl. Let's agree with that because I feel the way I carry myself makes me attractive. If that makes sense. Well, yeah, I mean, if I dress up in a suit, and, I mean, I'm talking about like, so, I ain't so, talking about you look bummy. I mean, I'm like, I'm in a suit, or you like, I'm, I'm talking about right we equally went through. Same outfit you wearing right now, I would, you would get more attention than me. And we might have to do a little test. We might have to do a little test. I might need to see that. We might have to do like a little YouTube test. I think you would get more attention than I would. I think if the both of you walked into to Chipotle the way you are now both of you would get noticed because like you said the way you carry yourself mm. the suit you know what I mean the fragrance that comes from you when you walk that's, past that's, a woman that's the difference. you know how well you're carrying yourself Adam the same thing goes for you you carry yourself just as well but just in a different right. aspect you know what uh, I mean so I feel like y'all would both get but it if I had on a t-shirt on the jeans at Chipotle or the gap or whatever so? would, yeah she would get more attention I would probably get followed around the store why? Just because you're black. So I, 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 maybe that, that is, been, you know what's so crazy is when, when you when you told me about this, when you told me about this, um, this topic, I try to think back of all, to all of the, you know, um, police brutality stuff that's been live, all the police, you know, killing of unarmed men that's been going on. And I'm trying to think of other than the guy who got shot up in Dayton somewhere or mm-hmm. somewhere, he was kind of like brown skinnish. Samir? But, no, no, no. It was the older dude that got shot oh, at Walmart. Oh, okay. He was kind of like a brown skin color, but everybody else has been pretty dark skin. So maybe there is a privilege. Like, I guess, you know, white people don't see their privilege unless they're rich or whatever, whatnot. But I don't see a privilege. Like, I don't see that I get treated betterly. In, betterly. That's not even a word. Better. Because <laughs> I'm not. It's what's they compared to. I'm not side by side. We don't. We didn't both get stopped in a car and the police yanked him out and all that shit and he come around and just talk to me all regular. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's a, that was when I was see a privilege. So you know what, I mean? what I personally think when it comes to light skin privilege, obviously I'm not light skin, so I would not know, <laughs> but I think that light skin privilege is a myth only because when we consider light skin privilege, we are considering people outside of our race that are giving us these privileges. And from what I understand, people who have an issue with us as a black uh, community or black individuals uh, anyway already see you as a defect they don't see you as a white individual they see you as a black man you know what I mean so for me I think the light skin um I'm, I'm more like you like I think the advantage or the 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 what's the what's the the, the privilege comes from attractiveness and some people just you know some people yeah. in their right, right or not in their right mind but some people that still have that battle with colorism inside themselves are battling that light is light is right and dark is not right. Right, and you know I think what that's I mean? what come. And I think, like, if if you had to say yes or no, there is a privilege. I, I guess I would have to. I would, you would have to say yes you know, statistically, just based off of that yeah. studies. Like light is dark, and like like you mentioned before, like the baby doll thing. Mm-hmm. Like everybody's seen that thing where it's like oh, it, that was an old video where they put a white baby, you know, a white girl and had a white doll and a black, black doll, doll. Which one is better? So I think even for white people, like they probably look at me and be like. Oh, cool. Compared to looking at him, like, oh my God, that's a black man. You know yeah, what I mean? So yeah. I think there is a privilege there. I okay. definitely think so. Okay. Um, some of the comments say confidence is attractive in any shade. Um, that was from Lakeisha. Um, Tierra says, "I hate the statement that light. The, I hate the statement of light skin privilege. That's extremely a, a myth." Um, Nicole says, "I had a bad encounter with a light skin guy. He was handsome, but he thought he was the." thought he was the shit and I couldn't deal with it my attraction is more towards the dark skinned guys just my preference but there's nothing wrong with light skinned guys either I would just have to encounter one that's for me um Nikita says I see that I get different I see that I get different treatment or accept it more readily than my dark skinned friends and it's completely ridiculous um but it happens there is one there is no one better and people of other races seem more comfortable with lighter skin sometimes I feel that so I think that's where the privilege I, so that's I think where that's where privilege comes from it is a privilege because they're more comfortable with you because your shade is lighter mm-hmm. if okay. it wasn't we wouldn't be talking about it right so there, it has to, it has it's to be created. but I think it's and I think you know and what's so crazy is of, of course it started with slavery and all that but you know since slavery it's just been in the media like when you see you know the even in movies like yeah, the light skin person ain't of, doing a lot of robbing and all that one stuff it's always a dark skin person well, I remember some per se. Um, reading something where Jada Pinkett was saying congratulations to someone who had won a role but she was like it would have been so um, a breath of fresh air had this person been of darker skin 
because dark skinned actresses and um, actors are not getting the same hmm. kinds of um, roles. I don't necessarily think that's true now, especially uh, us just came out this weekend. That was a whole family of darkness, right, you know right, what I mean? Right. Um, but again, that was just kind of how she felt in that moment. Uh, one of the questions we have is how can we teach our children and mentees about colorism and how to carry themselves and the expectation? Jess, I'm going to start with you. Well, I have a daughter who is quote unquote dark skinned, I guess that's if you want to call it that. Um, one of the, I'm not going to sit here and lie and say that I don't see color and I'm not going to tell her that she doesn't see color because color is there. It's, mm -hmm. This jacket is coral. Like I'm not, we're not going to act like that's not the case. Right. Um, but I always express to her how I feel about her and what she sees as a character. It's like how you look is great, but what you contribute to the community is more important than anything else. And just because we, we're raising our kids in like this selfie environment. Right. So I have to kind of pull her out of that and into like what matters. You right. know what I'm saying? And just take away all of that. Um, and just expressing to her like these changes of dark skin and you know beautiful hair and all that stuff mm -hmm. was created and it takes one second to get into something and a lifetime to get out of it yeah so it's going to take a very long time for this not to exist you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying like slavery wasn't that long ago right you know in reality the brown paper back test wasn't that long, long ago. ago yeah right. so it's just like to have an expectation that overnight that you're going to be considered not dark skin is just not an expectation that I'm going to set on her. Okay. So that's kind of what I do is just pull her out of that selfie space and have the expectation that she's going to experience things. Okay. And that's just it. Okay. Yeah. Christian, what about you? I have a 13 year old daughter. Speak up a little bit for me, baby. I have a 13 year old daughter. Um, well, that's a reflection. And I let I make it known that she's beautiful. I would say you're beautiful. Every time I, I see her, you're beautiful, you're gorgeous. How are you feeling? What do you got going on? How are you feeling about your body? She's tall and lanky. Mm -hmm. um, her mother was tall, I'm tall. So how are you feeling about you? What's going like? How are you feeling about your friends? Mm -hmm. she, has a good, she lives up in the, in the suburbs, so she has a good, good group of friends, yeah, diverse group of friends. So um, I think it's empowering our kids yeah. is a big deal. You know, if you tell your if, if your kids feel like it might this is my opinion. If I'm telling my daughter every day. I do it for two reasons. A, so another man won't tell him much with another guy. Mm -hmm. um, but B, I don't want the industry standards to define what she thinks is beautiful. Absolutely. Got you. And I think that it's interesting. Um, I was um, talking to a young lady about three weeks ago at, 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 at um, Tina's, and she was saying that she felt that society made her feel that she wasn't beautiful. Mm -hmm. She felt that media, she's about 30 years old, so she felt that social media to make her feel beautiful, and as a, as a brown skin, black woman she felt that there's no there's no industry standard for me to look a certain way and i said sweetheart you gotta that comes from within yeah but who in your friend network or in your parents or your family is empowering you and telling you that you're beautiful and i think a lot of us don't do that mm -hmm. within our within our own groups we don't tell our friends you look good brother hey so you look good girl you look good you know i don't think we do that enough um i have no issue giving compliments. I give them all the time to people. Mm -hmm. People don't even know. Because I think, especially us, I think it's very important to let us know that regardless if you're... It's, it's going to take us to build us. It, it, that's, it what, that's what it is. It Every is. other it's community doesn't besides that. us. Every other community builds each other up besides us. Yeah. Every that's, other community. I am... Um, to answer the question, I uh, my children have gone to the same school from kindergarten to sixth grade. And the school was predominantly black. And for me, the way that I... Um, kind of introduced this this idea of colorism and, and differences in color, because I'm like you, Jazz, we can't ignore it, is I put my children in a school environment where there were all different kinds of people. Absolutely. You know what I mean? There are Asian, there are Mexican, there are Latinos, there are, you know, different shades of individuals. Um, and my daughter, you know, she's, she's the first, my son will be there next year, but she's thriving, you know, and all of her friends are of different shades, and they all think that she's just so beautiful they're yeah. like oh my gosh your mom braided your hair up like that my hair will never stay like that <laughs> you know what I mean can I touch it and you know what I mean yeah. so they're really fascinated with yeah. her beauty and and it makes her feel beautiful too because and and Christian I was like you I tell her all the time yeah. how beautiful she is but in her mind she's like you my mom you got to say that mm -hmm. so to yeah. hear it from her peers yeah. means a lot but I also remind her even if they don't think that you have yeah. to remember that you are yeah. because 
yes, you you were fortunate enough to come across a group of children who were nice and who were, you know, um, easy to deal with mm-hmm. and who could accept you. Absolutely. But it's not always like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not always people that are going to love you. Sometimes people love you so much that they hate you. Yeah. Another, another thing, too, projection. People project their own issues onto, onto other people. On other people. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Absolutely. They'll take their issues and problems. Misery loves company, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Into their own issues and problems, project those issues and problems onto you or to your child. Yeah. Right. And if you don't, if you're not reinforcing, asking those questions, or talking to yeah. your, or even, or even talking to your kids, or even reminding yourself of saying, "Hey, regardless of what so and so may say or think, I'm still a, a beautiful individual, regardless of my shade or whatever." And I think that's really important to do that as well. I love that that open line of communication. Like my daughter is eight. Mm-hmm. And she's already at that point where she's asking questions, and I'll ask her questions. So I'm like, how do, you, like you said, how do you feel about yourself? How do yeah. you feel about, like, she'll tell me, like, I want my hair like this today. Okay, great. Right. You want your hair like this? How do you feel now? I feel good. Yeah, I love it. I was so, I did my daughter's <laughs> hair one time, and um, I wasn't a fan. Really? I did it, and I was just like, "Ooh, I don't like the way this came out." And it wasn't, it wasn't because it was too ethnic. It was yeah. just I did it wrong. Okay, yeah, yeah, my curl yeah. pattern was you off. Yeah. Um, and I did it, and she was like, "Oh, I love mm-hmm. this." And I'm like, "Okay, well, let me watch my face because <laughs> my facial expressions say something different." Yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, but again, it's 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 very important for them to accept themselves and be asked those questions so yeah. that you know, exactly. as a parent. How are you feeling about you? Because I may need to correct it. I may, yeah. Um, Lakeisha says, my young chocolate dimples daughter visited her lighter complected cousins who tried to make her face up to make her cute. I was sick. Yeah. I had to give her the tools. No, baby. God painted you beautiful already. No makeup needed. Uh, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. Um, <laughs> dark, <laughs> somebody said dark skin, light skin, medium skin, hashtag melanism. I do not like you. Um, Nicole says, I think all these myths are crazy. No matter what skin tone you are, everyone has a preference of who they date. And as long as a person is treating you with respect and dignity, the skin tone should never matter. Um, and Tierra says, I can't ignore color, but we, but, but can we as a black community acknowledge that we are all black and no matter the shade, we have the same plight and str- no matter the shade, we all have the same plight and struggles. We didn't choose to be light skinned, just like we didn't choose to be black in general. Um, Y'all done got me all off subject. Let me ask one of my questions. Um, So do you think that, um, okay, I want to ask the question, how is it that we allow colorism to still exist and be an issue and turn around and still say uh, hashtag black girl magic, hashtag black lives matter? Um, I feel like it's contradictory to itself. So Adam, I'm going to start with you. I mean, it really is a contradiction to itself, but you got to think about it like, like I said, it's the black community as a whole that is a problem that needs we need to fix within ourselves. You know, Black Lives Matter is only matters when a white person kills a black kid or a white man, you know, cop kills a black person. Because when a black one does it, we ain't screaming. We, ain't we not screaming Black, black Lives, Lives Matter. Matter. You know what I mean? Then, then it's only Black Lives Matter for, what, seven, nine days, yeah. and then it's back to, yeah. you, know, yeah. you know, self-hate in general, whether it's... A black person hating a, a light skinned person, or a black person hating another black person because he looked at him, or he had his shoes, or he wanted to rob him, whatever the case may be. So this is a, a problem within the community itself. Like it's a whole contradicting them to yell that and not uplift one another, not see another you know person doing good and you know give them a compliment, or see a person doing bad and be like, let me help you you know do better. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it's just a whole contradicting contradiction in itself, like the okay. whole community that we need to fix. Jazz. I feel like when it comes to the black girl magic and all of that, I, and I hate to do this, I'm so sorry, uh, <laughs> but I think progression is key. Mm-hmm. And, you know, within every organization, there's going to be problems that lie. You can't just, again, I'm big on like setting expectations that are just, we're progressing, like we're trying to move forward. Um, let's not have this black girl magic piece and then say, Oh well, like only the dark skin girls. Yeah, are black like yeah, like no, magic. like it's you know right. serving it all for all of us. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I think the biggest thing is just knowing that that is progression and not thinking that it's going to be perfection because we have all these things that we have to fix. It's going to take a long time to fix a lot of stuff. Like 
poverty. That's that's expensive to fix. Yeah, you know? mm-hmm. it takes time. So just like that, it's just I feel like we have to respect the fact that this is progression. So I can accept this progression, but I still have to deal with these other things, and that's going to take time. Okay, Christian. It wasn't something that was said about a year or so ago in regards to Black Lives Matter and Black Girls Matter and some of the activists that were doing with the raw life spin and biracial women, black mm. women, Angela Rye, um, a couple other ones were biracial or light skin. A lot of a lot of dark skin women were feeling a certain way, kind of what David Pinkett said as far as like my dark skin women can't get this role. Right. So it was a lot of backlash within the community that only light skin women were getting this this push for being activism and, and, and pushing the agenda for, for us as equality and, and, and things. And then you have maybe some light skin brothers who were only getting the push like with certain news networks and things like that, mm-hmm. and the dark skin brothers were not. So again, as Jasmine said, it, it's more so about progression. If we can just look past who's getting the shine opposed to what the purpose is to get that to get what we need to get to. Say it doesn't matter who gets the shine, right. it matters that one of us is out there. Exactly. Cool. And I and I, and I, and yeah. I, I have a saying it's kinda it's kinda silly. It's it's two ways to get to date, right? Mm-hmm. It's two ways. Seventy five, they take you right there. Mm-hmm. Better road, take a little time to get there. Yeah. But you're gonna still get the date. Right. Right. And I think that people try to scrutinize the method and the time to get to where we need to get to. And okay, Monkey King had two different ways of getting where we need to get, mm-hmm. but we but we they both had a common goal. Yeah. And if we can work together, we can work together. You know what I'm saying to get to that goal. Then I think that we can I, if we just get away from colorism and everything else. Then I think we can see the bigger picture. I like that you brought that up because one thing that I noticed about that comment is the reality is if it takes a light skinned person. I don't know, six months on the job to mm-hmm. get this promotion. Mm-hmm. But it takes a dark skinned person a year mm-hmm. to get that same promotion. Mm-hmm. The reality is both of us are still being treated the same way. Like <clears throat> both of us are still being um, considered less than our um, opponents or whoever, you know, our coworkers because of the complexion of our skin. And sometimes we forget that bigger picture. The reality is like, yeah, you may get an extra little privilege because you're light skinned, but you still got stuff that you deal with from other uh, from right. other races and us. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then even you know, as a light skinned person, and I've 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 um, talked to a couple of light skinned people who said, you know, being younger when they grew up, they didn't think that they were beautiful at all. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, they had so many brown skinned or dark skinned people mm-hmm. telling them that you think you cute that they started yeah. to kind of question it like well I god damn it I just might not be yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean and they might be concerned about that um Dave says us lighter complex <clears throat> complex men had to know how to fight growing up we got tired more early on <laughs> and Tierra says I like this Christian guy he's smart um and Chrissy says we basically just have to change our mindset we have to know that all shades of black are in period which I also agree with um, so I talked about this earlier, chocolate, chocolate drop, red, bone, light skin. Um, I want to ask you all in your own perspectives, are these considered compliments? I know that I have referred to several chocolate men as chocolate drop. Um, and it's always, it's always said as a compliment, but I spoke to a woman, uh, yesterday who said if I wasn't confident as a chocolate woman, I would consider that offensive. Um, I've spoken to, you know, um, men who are light skinned, who have been called, you know, yellow boys or red boys or whatever the case may be. Um, and they don't always like that com- uh, uh, compliment. And sometimes they don't take it as one. So are, are descriptions and terms like that more hurtful or is it just the individual person who's having an issue accepting it for what it really is? And Adam, I'm going to start with you. Again? No, I started with Jazz last time. Oh, but boy, don't start Simon. talking me. <laughs> Um, I almost said that's that light skin mess. I'm look, so see, sorry. Look, I almost see, slipped out. See. I swear, it almost slipped out. But it's really just because it's him. It really is. Um, I mean, like, there's definitely like a individual basis thing. Like I personally don't like it, just because, like, I don't like, like you know, red bone or whatever. Just because the same reason why I don't like being called pretty boy or pretty or gorgeous. Like women, be like, oh, you have a gorgeous face. That's a that's a feminine compliment like don't you know what I mean so I don't like it for that same reason it's just like it's a feminine thing that you might I might call a girl like a red bone but don't call me a red bone cause cause you're a man <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> Jess, I'm gonna go with you. Uh, I think that 
think it is. I agree. I think it's really an individual thing. Mm -hmm. Um, It depends on what that person is experiencing internally, how they receive it. And it's also sometimes a delivery. uh, Definitely. As a woman, like, if I'm walking down the street and you yelling, yeah, like, I'm uncomfortable now. Right. Like, it's just, but I think it's just about that person, the setting, um, because I do receive certain things certain ways as Mm -hmm. a woman. Like, certain compliments that men might think is a compliment for me is not. Like, it's totally disrespectful. Um, And it's just about my insecurities, too, sometimes, of where I am at that time. So, I think that's really what it is. I like that you said that. I'll never forget the first time somebody called me a bad bitch. I was so offended. Oh, my God. I was so offended. And it's like, Like, first of all, you just called me out my name. (laughs) Second of all, there's nothing bad about me. I'm a very positive person. Right. Um, so the fact that you even put two of those disrespectful terms together and, and then considered like it, it was a compliment, and, you know what I mean, just blew my mind. Oh, but but I mean, I you know, yeah, but you know that's society yeah. and, and 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 that's just kind of you know. But someone else, how they are, would like it. You yeah, absolutely. Somebody else thing. is posting on yes. the shower or something saying that they a bad bitch. Yeah, and you know that's what I mean. Crazy. That's why I'm like, it's it's each individual person because like for me in the position that I'm in, like. When I first started with photography, I would have other photographers come up to me and they're like, oh, yeah, you're a model. And I'm like, I'm not. I'm a <laughs> photographer. And they're like, yeah, but you should model, though. And then just like, but I'm not. Right. And it's just them trying to put you in this box constantly. And it just becomes disrespectful after mm-hmm. a while. Gotcha. So, yeah. It, and it was me, too, just feeling like I was so, I wanted to be accepted as a photographer. So, for them to call me not a photographer affected me and that was something that I was dealing with so it didn't yeah. have anything to do with it was internal because you could have said like okay thank you for the compliment but my skill set You're is fine when and, it comes to but you know what they're only going to hire you as a model though that right. was the unfortunate yeah. part got you got you what about you Christian it doesn't bother me I'm a late bloomer so oh, okay. all the compliments can come up like thank you appreciate it thank you, thank you. So, okay so it doesn't bother me all right me. all right I'll take that um, Tierra says, I like, I, I hate being called light skinned, preferably. Um, <laughs> she also said, gorgeous face is feminine, boy, bye. Um, let me see. Uh, Dave says, you can't call a light skinned man a red bone. That's extremely disrespectful. See? Um, Akeem says, well, at least after the Jesse Smollett allegations, us dark skinned warrior kings are more trustworthy than light skinned dudes. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Akeem, you ain't right for that. <laughs> you are not right for that. Um, but no, I, I, I. Let me see. Oh, Chris says, shout out to you, Jazz. He loves. He absolutely loves your photography work. Oh, thank you. Um, but no, I, I, I definitely feel like, and you know, Christian, I think you're an example of that. You feel comfortable with you, so you can take a compliment, even if it may not be the compliment that you think is the compliment you might be able to get. Just coming from another person's perspective, if you see me and you see me in this light, but it's an attractive light to you, okay, cool, thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Um, That's just like uh, being uh, a young girl. You know, my mother always told me, stay away from the men that call you sexy and gear more towards the ones that call you beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because they see you differently. Yeah. Um, So I, li- I like those answers. Um, So... Adam, you brought up the baby doll test that we had talked about. Um, Do you think, and this goes to the question of how can we help our children deal with this, do you think that if our children were put into the same test but had a light doll, a brown doll, and a dark doll, that they would still see all of those dolls as bad? Or would they start to then, you know, see the light doll as the good doll and the dark doll is still the bad doll like how do you think that that would would that help the situation at a younger age or would we still be kind of in the same cycle jazz i'm gonna start with you i think it depends on the parenting um each parent is different um i'm almost 30 years old so for me and how i raise my kid is obviously going to be different from each parent Mm -hmm. it varies in each generation but for my child in particular i can speak from my experience she's question she questions everything she's from that generation like well why would they be bad so like so you're asking me this question but i want to understand why you're asking this question so she's going to do that first before she even picks anything out because she's analytical but i don't know like if other kids are raised in that way and i don't know if that's just her character yeah or if that's something from the way that i've raised her so i can't say exactly what that would look like but i know my child enough to know that the first thing she's going to be like now when you say bad 
what do you mean? Right. Are and they thieves? Are they thieves? Like, she's gonna <laughs> do they cuss their mamas out? Like, yeah, she's going to ask. She's going to come for She wants the whole rundown gotcha. before she even makes that decision. So color is, and we were in Miami when I first had my child. So we were around all, all types, types of, of diversity. Yeah. So her even coming here was like, oh, my gosh, like, one of the Where is everybody? Yeah. Well, wait. She asked me, "Am I black?" Oh. I was like, "Oh yeah, we never had that conversation because you were living in Miami and everybody kind of looked the same, so it was just never something that came up." But she's gonna ask first before she assumes anything. So that's okay. just kind of the conversation that I have with my kids. What about you, Christian? Um, hmm. I think my daughter would. Be fine, and she she would pick the dark skin and the brown skin. Cause even even when she was younger, I think she would pick the dark skin and the brown skin kid. Um, I think with this era, obviously with social media and YouTube and information, kids have so much information at their fingertips that we didn't have growing up. Yeah, you know, I'm an '80s baby. You know, I grew up in the '80s and '90s, and the information we had to go look for it. Mm-hmm. I tell my niece who's 19, and also my daughter, you know, you have a computer on your phone, research and look it up. And I think the information they have makes them can do one of two things. It can empower them or can hurt them. Or can hurt them. Yeah. Um, and I think that because of that information, that is powerful mm-hmm. and it's also detrimental. Yeah. Um, so. Adam, I'm going to ask you um, a slightly different question because... I'm light skin. No. <laughs> because not. you have a light-skinned <laughs> daughter and a brown-skinned son. <laughs> um, have you had these conversations... Um, between light skin, brown skin, or whatever the case may be, colorism in general with your children. And if you have not, thinking about this conversation, what would you say to them? Uh, what's so crazy is after hearing hearing them talk about how they talk to their kids and whatever, whatnot, it's surprising and awakening in a, in a sense. Like, if you think of, like, like I don't think light-skinned people, like, we have that talk with our... I mean, I tell my daughter she's beautiful for the same reason. So another man, I set the bar high. So when another man there come along, go. he got to he gotta meet this bar. Otherwise, she's going to be like, what is this? Like, So I set that bar high automatically for her. But like, we, I don't have to have that. I don't think we had to have that conversation as far as light versus dark, whatever. Like somebody calling her ugly or whatever case may be. And that's so surprising that I think that a lot of dark-skinned kids or dark-skinned parents probably statistically probably have to have that conversation a lot more than light-skinned people, which is – stupid as f but it's crazy that that's the case and hearing you say that and i don't even want you to take this offensively because you know i love you You always start with that i know you know like don't get offended but like you know uh, you know something's coming say that though i guarantee you that's the same way white people feel when it comes to this black crime cop kill you know what i'm saying they don't yeah. have to have these conversations with their children. They don't. You know what I mean? So, and I've said, your daughter is gorgeous. I mean, all of our, our, our daughters are gorgeous, I'm sure. You know what I mean? You know, Aaliyah, that's my baby. Like, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? Um, so you, you're you probably never going to have to have that conversation right. with her. You know what I mean? Cameron, he looked like you, so, you know, he he's sharp. You know what I'm saying? He got a nice, nice little brown skin complexion to him. He got the good hair. You know what I mean? They may not know off rip that he a mix with a little something extra. Right. You know what I'm saying? But... Thank you for being honest enough to say that because I think that's the same thing that goes through white people's heads when they, I don't have to tell my son to be careful coming home. Right. He white. He ain't got nothing to worry about. Exactly. And that's the, how they live. That's, that's light crazy, skin yeah. privilege. But I think my daughter, she, she's lucky to have diverse diversity with even within her because her mom is, you know, brown skin. Well, she's kind of light skinned but her mother is dark. Her uncles is dark. The, the, the people that she hangs around mostly are all dark skin, brown skin, and dark skin. She don't hang around my side of the family as much. So I think she she kind of automatically identifies with being dark. So she doesn't think of a uh, dark-skinned girl as being ugly, being mm-hmm. a light-skinned You know what I mean? I don't think yeah. she has to deal with dark-skinned people calling her ugly. So I don't think none of her cousins are calling her ugly because that's her cousin. They all love each other. you know. So I don't think she has, like I said, people's perception is based off their reality. Yeah. So if you have a dark-skinned child and all of y'all are dark-skinned and they go out to the world and there's, you know, light-skinned people calling them this name or white people calling this name, then they have that, that problem yeah. of, of self-identity or whatever the case may be. But like I said, we're just lucky to already have that diversity in there already. Yeah. Same thing with my son. Like, you know, his his mother's family is all brown-skinned and dark-skinned, so he just, he has that 
mix already in there. So if he does get called ugly or something, it's by his cousins and they fight or whatever case. Okay, I think I said good hair, and I don't remember saying good hair. But if I said good hair, I'm you sorry because <laughs> I definitely I I went natural three years ago, and baby girl just discovered her curl pattern. And it's gorgeous. So. Excuse me, because they definitely just came for Did me they come for a second. You? They came for me. It was like, good hair, hold up. Like, what you mean? And you know Tierra was the first one. Like, oh, what my, you saying? She's so extra. <laughs> Tierra, you, so, you extra as fuck. Um, let me see. <laughs> Always, like, we done went in there so many times. I just, I just, I don't think we I played like no more. I like to keep Tierra and Adam away from each other on, <laughs> on any of my lives. Um, let me see. Um. When she loved me back in high school, she used to try to braid my hair. <laughs> she used to sit on my lap. Like, used to want to listen to my head, um, my Walkman. All right, so T says, how do we get away from this stereotype that dark is bad? What is it that we can do? Christian, I'm going to start with you. What can we do? Stop thinking. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't think it's anything that we really can do collectively. Um, I think it's a, if a personal it's, it's it's a, a personal, personal It's a personal stride. I mean, one thing that... One thing that's interesting in regards to me is that I feel like I get looked at, especially in my city, as an outlier. He's a dark-skinned brother. He dresses the way he dresses. looks the way he looks. And he's not a threat. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Where you have, I know other people who have the, are in the same dynamic as me and are perceived, perceived as like, it's like I'm a, this enigma. And, it, and it's irritating. You know what I'm saying? It's frustrating. Um, it's other brothers who look just as good as me, college as me, and, and, and white skin, dark skin, brown skin, everything in between. And it's like we're like we're outliers. It's not, it's, it's not, and within our own race as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so if we can just stop with these misconceptions, these perceptions that we, because he's light skin, has tattoos, he's an artist, opposed to just being maybe educated with an MBA. You know. Um, me looking how I look, maybe I can be the most thugged out guy you ever met. Mm-hmm. You never know. But the perception is he's not because he wears glasses and the turtleneck on mm-hmm. and the handkerchief. So why can't we just in- invest in the character of somebody opposed to just having these people supposed to when I first see you, I assume you're this. I, I think that is a solution. I think to stop, stop, um, to stop like assuming, you said, to stop, stop judging. Absolutely. We have a judgment problem, I think, within our community. The we biggest, are, we huge are, we judgment problem. Huge, we judge a like huge, we we huge. we quick. We are quick to just assume some about somebody. Mm-hmm. Just assume like oh, opposed to the same. What's up? How you doing? Hey, what's your name? You mm-hmm. know, what's your story? What, what you, about? you about? What yeah. you about? Yeah, yeah. 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 makes that judgment from there. Absolutely. Opposed to just looking at this person like, mm. Mm. <laughs> I mean, like why why do we do that to each other? Like why like why do you automatically think I think I'm better than you? Right. <laughs> right. You know. You know, you don't know me, dude. Yeah. Ma'am. Right, <laughs> right. Ma'am. You don't know me. And again, go back to projection. You're projecting your insecurities and issues onto me versus what you got going on. So Um, Adam, this is a question for you. They say, Do you see a difference in your child in how your children perceive themselves as far as their complexions, or do they both feel that they are or do they both feel they're attractive? I'm not saying that word. <laughs> or do they both feel they're attractive because of how you've raised them? Um, I think they both feel like they they're attractive. I think it's that too, only because um, I know his kids, <laughs> and I know the I know the pedestal that you put them on as a father, as yeah. you should. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, and I think, like I said, it, it all goes back to parenting. You know what I mean, but at the end of the day, especially with this this last question, I think eighty percent of it is the media, yep. like which is something we can't control whatsoever. Like we can't stop our kids from watching certain stuff or seeing certain stuff. But you know, at the end of the day. At the same time, it's like accountability for us. Yeah. Like, okay, we we know white people messed us up for years. We know they've been brainwashing us for years. We know all of this stuff. So why don't we change us? You know what I mean? At the end of the day, and like that's we can only start with our own kids. Or yeah. you know, you you know, if you in some community reach program, or you in the hood and you see some kids doing something, you stop them, whatever the case may be. But speaking life into youngsters or whatever the case may be. But like. That's the only way we can get through with it is, you know, teaching our own, teaching ours that's around us. But the media is always going to be a play a bigger part. To say, to think about what you're saying, there was a word that was used a lot back in, like, in the 60s and 50s that black folks were synonymous with was dignity. Mm. You hear, you hear this, this, this dignity word a lot when it comes to black folks pretty much before 1970. Mm-hmm. You hear just about how dignified we were, how we dressed, how we carried ourselves as a community. 
we all had a common goal. You hear you this, this, this dignity word. You hear you hear it a lot. And I really feel for the last rap 50 music years, and videos changed that. Yeah, over the last fifty years, my father they made it. He said that. he said something happened between seventy eight and eighty two. He uh, pinpointed disco, drugs, drugs, drugs you know, all these thing. things yeah. that really made us question and just not be as dignified as we were ten years before that. Mm-hmm. I think um, that goes back to Dr. Umar. I, I listen to a lot of stuff on but he said something as far as like once Dr. King, you know, got assassinated or whatever, the 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 government, you know, they seen that Black all this dignity stuff was going on, and you know the black family was funding Martin Luther right. King and Malcolm X. So they said like, okay, well, in order to destroy this dignity and this power, we need to separate the family base. Da, da, da. And then once that family base started, because you'll see around that same time, that's when more and more black families start stop getting married and all that yeah. one stuff. So that separation of unity within the family, so the which then starts separating everything. They around. Around. Exactly. Yeah. But also, yeah. was also programs going on too in regards to. The '94 crime bill, other 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 things yep. issues that was happening where generations of black men were going to jail. Exactly. So when you have generations of black men going to jail and they're under, it's kind of like one part. And I love Black Panther; it's my favorite movie of all time. One part that at the end of during the movie, Sterling Brown's character, the uncle who got killed, mm-hmm. said that they're under over policed, undereducated, over incarcerated, and they don't have the tools to fight back. And he was talking about obviously weapons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I got into HR for one reason and one reason alone. To be able to sit at the table and hire people for economic advancement and hire black folks. Period. Black folks don't have opportunities that other people have. It's a program I'm starting at Woodward High School. Woodward certifies MAs for bobbins out of high school. I'm going to be able to hire 10 or 15 kids that are coming out of seniors out of high school to trial. That is, these other, nobody else has these programs. That's awesome. Yeah. These kids be working at Target, working at McDonald's or Popeyes around the neighborhood because they have no other opportunities. Yeah, they don't see it. They don't either. see it. And, and, and that's the other home. problem that you run into is that, sorry, no, you're fine, you're but fine. they don't see it. Mm-hmm. Like for me as a, a black woman, I have to be present in my community to show them that success, what it looks like and what you see is mm-hmm. kind of what you re- like they don't know they that don't these know. are available they don't yeah. know that creative directing is a thing yeah because right. that's not what's presented it's like Absolutely. you can be an scna you could be a nurse but it's right. just like there's other you can be cosmetology yeah. you can be nails yeah. and, there's, and so there's no shade to people no, no, that are no, no, in that no. field Absolutely. it's just that there's, there's so many things. other things yeah. that Absolutely. we can be right um I spoke with a woman um actually she was my she stay busy feature for march whitney gaskins who is uh, she has a PhD in engineering, like biomedical engineering. You know what I mean? Something I I don't even know how many times in my life I've even heard that word. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's just being realistic. Yeah. But these are the same things, like you said, that these children don't know they that don't they're see. not aware of right. yeah. that they could be that's so much more. I about to say that's, but in a white school that's or something, that's, that's, yeah. that's, that's the same thing with the with the with the schooling. Like I said, the the, the problem is so this white, light skin, dark skin is is so much bigger than just light skin, dark skin, like as far as the base of it, the root of it. Like and until you kill that root, it right. it's still gonna continue to grow. Like yeah. their root is media. The root is, you know Well I would I I, I would argue the media piece. Let me tell you why. There are parts in the South that still have this stigma where if you don't like Whitley Gilbert, you cannot date the Wayne Wayne. There are certain parts in the South even now. But you know um, what? There there's there's also when it comes to media we don't even realize that based off of our region, based and off of our environment, right, yeah. we, sh- we get shown different things. Right, right. Exactly. You know right. what I mean? Um, me and Jay, you, um, uh, Carter, mm-hmm. used to sit at work and we would be like, what did your Google bring up when you put this in? Because my Google right. brought this up. And yeah. we'd be like, my Google brought up like 25 other different things. What right. did your, why did your Google say that versus mine? It's because, you know, they are watching and testing yeah. and, and, and you know what I mean doing right. what it is that they've been doing for a very long time so um, I think it is a the, the, like you said it's such a bigger picture to understand that like we're all trying to figure it out we're all trying to make it I could ne- I would never have thought to become an entrepreneur or someone who does not depend on corporate America to survive had I not met you you were wow. the only <laughs> entrepreneur I had ever known in my life Dang. Wow. until I entered this world and met other entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. And and you had did it for so long. You know, I think at one point, I think 
we worked at corporate America together for maybe two, three years, and you was like, I'm out of here. I ain't, yeah, I, I can't sit in front of a computer all day long. <laughs> and for me, it was totally comfortable. Right. But, you know, our conversations kind of, you know, and you kind of got right. in my ass, yeah. and, and it was just <laughs> like, Ashley, you need to do something else. It's not what miss, was meant for you, which yeah. I appreciate because now I can live in my light and my truth and what I was meant to do. Yeah which I truly appreciate, but it took a long time because like you said, it was something I never saw. Mm -hmm. My mother works in corporate America. My grandmother did. My grandfather did. My aunt is a housewife, so it was corporate America or somebody was taking care of me. You know what I'm saying? Until I started paying attention that uh, my best friend does some other things. I'm going to ask this question before somebody goes off on me. Can you ask them if they all, or if they were always confident in their color, or was this something that they had to build up, and why? And Christian, I'm gonna start with you. I was not confident in my color at all. <laughs> I didn't become comfortable with who I am until I was 29 years old. Wow. Mm. And and then to be completely transparent, I had a conversation with a good friend of mine on on Wednesday that has made has just thrown me off even now in regards to who I am. Mm-hmm. Not my color, but just yeah. My mentors. Um, so I'm a very confident individual because I have to. I had to be. Yeah. Now. Um, Could I you love imagine me. that though? 29 years of not. I was not not liking well, who you really are. Well, yeah. I think parents have. My my dad raised my, my mother left when I was nine years old. My dad raised me and my sister. So I didn't have a mother there mm. that nurtured. My grandmother's old school. My aunt was old school. My dad is a man. So your dad probably wouldn't come to you he like, boy, you look real handsome nah, today, son. He would be like, son, you'll be all right. You, you, you got big teeth now, big glasses, you're skinny. You, you'll grow into your features, and, and he was right. Yeah. But I was not comfortable with my whole being until I was 29 years old. I wanted to be I wanted to be light-skinned when I was in high school. Because mm-hmm. all the do, all the, I was so girl-happy. I was like Terrence on Different World when he first came to the world. <laughs> I was that dude that was on the hills, running around. Nah, nah. I, was, I was that kid. I was, and I went because I... I didn't have that love for my mom, who was telling me, son, you're handsome. I didn't have that. Right. So my, my grandmother was light-skinned. You know, my sister was light-skinned. Me and her class, she called me all type of, she's younger than me. She called me Blackie and Crispy Addicts, all type of names growing up. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't until I was about 20, 20, 29 years old, don't forget the day, 29 years old, that I felt comfortable within myself. Totally wow. comfortable. And it can be construed as arrogance or confidence, or whatever, mm-hmm. but I'm my biggest fan. And it took me As a long time be. Right. To, be, be. to be this way. That's it took right. me a very long time. But, you know, you're still growing. And I still grow. Every, I'm, I'm, I'm not finished. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not a finished product. But I like to ask you this question because I've seen your pictures from back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's so crazy because as he's, he's, you know, answering your question, I'm trying to think in, in my head, was there ever a time where, I wasn't confident or, you know, thought poorly of myself. And I don't think there was. And it wasn't, it didn't, it didn't never have nothing to do with light skin or dark skin or anything like that or even my color. Because even to this day, like, whenever, like I said, when a woman calls me gorgeous, like, don't call me that. That's, you know, feminine. I never, you know, be like, oh, I'm the sh- ish, I'm the shit or I'm light skin or what, I look good or whatever. You know me from, I never acted that way. Um, and I think it has a lot to do with how I was raised. I was raised around my white side majority. So I kind of identified. I didn't say identified. I just, like, my shoes. I didn't care. Like, you know, white people don't be caring about their shoes. Right. I don't care about my shoes. Like, they be looking busted or whatever. I'd still wear them or whatever. Like, I still only have, like, three or four pairs of shoes. Still to this day. Like, I don't buy a lot of shoes. So I've always had, it wasn't, like, necessary confidence or I thought it was. It was just, like. I never ever cared what nobody ever thought about me. Tierra bust out and said, "No, Adam thought he was the shit in high school." <laughs> See, and that's the thing, that, and she knows better. I used to come to high school looking; my braids used to be dusty. That she used to braid my hair. Like I never cared. I came to school looking bummy because growing up, we only got clothes income tax time, just kind of like black people. Income tax time, black dude. That, that was that was. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was about to say, y'all better get on with it. Well, my, black friends, know, my black friends, my black friends, my my friends. Know, you know what I mean? Okay, okay. I know what you mean. So because we're doing light skin versus dark skin, you know what I mean? They might yeah. thought that I had you know privileges. So we got we got clothes, income tax time, and back to school. 
So whatever school, whatever shoes or clothes I got, I I had to wear that the whole year. Like right. we didn't get, we didn't even get Easter outfits. A lot of my friends got Easter brand new Easter outfits. We never got Easter outfits, like unless it was like a dress up outfit. Right. Like it wasn't no Jordans. It was, we didn't even have. We I never owned a pair of Jordans, like ever. So my thing is like I just was raised a certain way that I just didn't. I never cared what nobody saw. And then once I made enough where once once I was old enough to work a job. I bought everything that I wanted. Then I went to working and making more money than I ever thought, and then entrepreneur. So I just, I was just raised a certain way that I never cared what nobody else thought. So I never had to walk with confidence or think like, yeah, like do I look good today? Yeah. Right. I look good today. Or tell care. myself I look good. Out, like, I'm this wrinkle shirt. Care. Like I still to this day wash clothes, leave it in the basket, <laughs> then throw it on the bed. Then it's on the bed for a couple like a week or something <laughs> until it's all depleted. And then I, you know, I put the shirt on, it's kind of wrinkled. Like, I still to this day do not care what I look like. All right, Jazz, what about you? So, for me, I am going to be transparent. I'm very similar to you. My mom wasn't around. My dad kind of brought me up. So, I had braids. I look like my brother. I dress like my brother. We were, like, always the same. So, I grew up tomboyish. And then my father got married. My aunt stepped in. And I was so used to looking like that, that wearing a dress I was like ugh, ugh, ugh. <laughs> and I you know I poop so I'm just like I ain't trying to wear no dress I want to put on some sweats like and all through high school I was a hot mess and I definitely I just never felt like pretty that was just never a thing mm. and that's because I was my dad was it you know what I'm saying so and once my mom stepped in my stepmom and my aunt and all of them stepped in I think I started to realize there was another side but all through high school I was I didn't get my confidence until I was probably I started dancing for the Cavaliers, and I had to cut my hair off. Mm. And I was like, wait, I gotta cut my hair? Like, that threw me the way off. But not having the hair length that I thought that I should have, I had to find some way to just rock it. And, yeah. you know, shout out to Jamie Taylor, because she was just like, you look good. Like, rock the hairstyle. And like, I rocked it, and ever since then, I would cut my hair off, straighten it, curly, natural, everything. And that's really what brought my confidence was later when I had to do it, like, and I was forced to, or you going to feel this way. Um, I, I appreciate all of you being so open and honest about your answer. My experience was totally different, um, and it had nothing to do with my color. It was just always my weight wow. that was an issue for me, but it was never an issue for anybody else. It was an issue for me. Okay. You know what I mean? And it did not stop being an issue for me until plus was in. Then I stopped caring that mm. I had thighs and an extra little layer for you to hug up on at night. Yeah. Like this, that's when it stopped being an issue yeah. because then society accepted it. Yeah. So my experience was totally different. I, it was almost like I didn't accept me until society did. Wow. Mm. Um, but then once society did accept me, I would occasionally run into some people who weren't plus size fans yeah. and it was just like Psh, I ain't even trying to hear what you're talking about like right. I don't even care what you're talking about now right. but it wasn't until society embraced this plus that I started to feel that like I was beautiful that way. Yeah. Um, so yeah my experience was totally different um, let me see Dominique says it's hard to get past a mindset when it is rooted so deeply in family exposure is critical and we have we've got to take part in being a voice in order to do that, we've got to have a healthy heart and mind embracing our true selves. Um, somebody said, this is for you, Adam. It must be nice to have that confidence to be wearing wrinkled shirts. Us dark-skinned people don't have that luxury. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you can. You just can't. You don't have to. I, I don't care what no. People say something about it. Like, I'm, oh, I'm your telling, shirt wrinkled. I'm, I'm like, you, man, the perception is I don't different, care. Man. It I'm is. It is. It, and, and, and as we it's can different. all see, we've all gone through all different things. We've all experienced yeah. things differently. So we've all... Um, had to, like you said, we all got to the same path. We just all took a different route. Different route. Yeah, we all just that. took a different route. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to keep you guys uh, too long. I'm going to ask this one last question just because Tierra is asking it and she has to know. Side note, why did you cut your hair? Well, I cut my hair because they wanted me to go into an edgier hairstyle. Mm -hmm. So I was wearing, rocking the, because, you know, again, braids, tomboy. I was looking, not, not that that's a mess, but 
for them to be a dancer, they're like, okay, ma'am, you're going to have to not do this. I mean, my stuff was bump, like mm-hmm. church bump, you know. Mm. Grandma did your hair. You got this thing going Say with on. with the rollers at it night? It was bump. I, I, there was no style, you know. <laughs> my grandmother was, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So for them, they were like, we want to see. This is when Rihanna had the bob cut, mm-hmm. and she had the, like, the edgy bob cut. When I did that, I was like, I don't want my hair to be short. Mm. But I did it because I really wanted um, I really wanted to dance. So it was less about they asked me to do it. I was young. I did it. And it has changed my life completely. I find that so um, interesting that the braids was an issue for you. Yes. Well, I um, wore Tommy Hilfiger. I'm wearing, you know, I look like a boy. Like, I'm right. surprised people See, don't I ask. did the braids too. Yeah. Um. But they were always so beautiful to oh, me, no. only because I was rocking them like Eve was rocking them. No, I had so the way braids. Eve was rocking them, I had Rough Rider braids. No. Like you know what I mean? My mama ain't do my braids. They got daddy braids. Oh, okay. uh, daddy braids. You had real nigga braids. Yeah, had real nigga braids. You had them nigga braids. You had them nigga braids. I had a different, you know, Dang. upbringing. And, you know, you know when a dad tries to do your hair, it's just different. Like. Uh, Your hair might get done on a Monday, but then Wednesday roll around. Dad still don't know what to do. You ain't wore a scarf all week. Right. So I had those. Oh, so, yeah, right. coming from that to like. I got you. Yeah. I got you. That, that was a bit different. <laughs> yeah. That was a bit different. That was a bit different. Yeah, Lakeisha, you know them Rough Rider braids. Those was back in in the day. As soon as Eve came out with them Rough Riders, it was over. I rocked them braids for a very long time. Mm-hmm. Then when Moesha came out, I started rocking her braids, and then it was just on the flow from there. Um. <laughs> Courtney says, looks like we individually have to do the work to heal those childhood traumas. And I'm so glad that you said that. I want to end it on that note because what I recognize within this conversation is, like you said, like we all went through things. We all dealt with things differently, but we all got to this space. We're all successful in our individual careers and we're all very confident in who it is that we are now but it took us a long time to get there. And I think it's important for people like me, people like you, you know, parents, definitely to instill um that type of confidence in our children but also to not sugarcoat it you can't sugarcoat it you can't lie to them you can't act like it doesn't exist because when they leave us somebody else is going to expose it to them and um i had this conversation with my I, i well let me say that i've been trying to have this conversation with my daughter excuse me about sex and intimacy um and she's only 12 I've been trying to have this conversation with her for probably a year and a half. Mm-hmm. And I love my baby because every time I try, she's like, Ma, <laughs> I ain't there yet. We'll talk about it when I'm there. Yeah. And I've, I've tried several times. Well, because I've tried and she knows that I've tried, two months ago she came to me and she said, Mom, on my birthday I'm turning 13. Nice. On my birthday, we can, it's time to have that talk. We can have that talk. And I... It scared the shit out of me because I'm like, well, why the hell we can have the talk now? <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but I appreciated the honesty from her. You know what I mean? And the open communication for me to be able to talk to her like that. But it's important to me to do that, not because I want to expose my baby to sex, but because somebody in your school is going to talk to you about that before I get a chance to, and you're going to listen to them. Right. When your friends come to you and say, Girl, I want to kiss him, or I want to do this, or I want to do that. I need my baby to be so educated that she teaches somebody else's child. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Just yeah. in case their parent isn't paying attention the yeah. way that I'm paying attention. Yeah. Um, and I just, I, I, I have to, to, to say thank you and uh, for the open honesty and the candor of this conversation because the reality is we are all, we all deal with colorism at one point in time of our lives. Mm-hmm. Um, I have dealt with it um, in a sense where I've been guilty of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it wasn't because of a self-hate yeah. for me, or maybe it was, and I didn't even realize it. You yeah. know, Christian, you were open and honest enough to say, I wanted to be light-skinned when mm-hmm. I was younger. Yeah. Hell, I think I may light sk- light, date light-skinned people because maybe I underlyingly want to be light-skinned. I don't know. Yeah. But I do know that holding self, um, that self-accountability is everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's important for us to um, not only fix it within our children, but also make sure that we are aware of it within ourselves yeah. and that we don't put out this negative energy when it comes to light skin brown skin dark skin or whatever yeah. i've encountered light skin men that weren't no good i've encountered dark skin men that weren't no good i've encountered men who were great and i wasn't good for them so the shit just didn't work out yeah. you know what i mean so the reality is we just need to be open and honest and and have self 
uh, uh, accountability when mm -hmm. it comes to things like this. Yeah. So again, I want to thank you guys for taking the time to come on and be open and honest. Mm -hmm. um, I absolutely love the conversation. Hopefully you guys loved it too. Make sure that you guys are tuned in next week. We are talking to adult entertainer Takara, who's going to talk about the life of an adult entertainer, what it means to be a stripper, why she chose to be a stripper, and, 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 and the things that kind of come in, you know, in that. Chrissy, please stop dancing. <laughs> Come into that lifestyle. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to tune in. Again, a big shout out to Kickbacks and The Loft, 8087 Vine Street, May 30 or March 30th from 3 to 7. Make sure that you guys are here for the Bougie Yard Sale. And another big shout out again to uh, Markel Benai, www.markelbenaiwines.com is where you can go get your wine of experiences. And I'm your host, Ask Ashley, and thank you for tuning in to another great episode of Monday Night Juice. Bye. Bye.